doing is not just creating little parts of, of trails, but really creating a, a trail network. And when we see now this connection that kind of eventually heads out, you know, going east to Boston, I don't know, I'm so easily disoriented, in whatever direction Boston is from here. I always uh, my instincts were right. You know. I just got my map. Yeah, this is why I need maps. We better look it over one more time. That's a good point. Or what was it, an, an elbow or a knee? I don't know what it was. It, for any of you who saw, there's a lovely WWLP interview from last Friday on the, on the Mass Exchange program where Wayne and Craig were interviewed talking about these trails. We posted it on our website, and I encourage you to do that. So again, you know, before I do that, we want to, I wish we could give you a lot of money, Wayne, but we can't. But we did raise $3,400 for the city's efforts. And so total over the last six years, we've given $18,000 to help you take that money, leverage it in the way that you do in so many ways. So I want to thank you for that right now. It's all small on Mark Bill, just like that. So I, I know that the mayor couldn't come uh, tonight and you know, send her regrets, but it's, it's again, wonderful. Uh, because we always give you the money as well, because we know you're able to do the best thing for it. So without further ado, let me introduce Wayne and turn things over to hear a little bit about the future of these trails. Thank you. I just want to thank you first. First, I have to say, Julia, we start, she approached us and said, I'm interested in an internship, I can get credit, give me interesting research projects. Now, research is the same thing as planning a party. <laughs> and it's these great projects that she's all excited about, and then at some point this ribbon cutting took more and more time, and she's been amazing and set into the play. And I, there's one thing I've learned actually from the East Hampton committee. I think I, I, I'm going to brag about North Hampton. I think North Hampton does a wonderful job about a lot of things, and of course we have great staff. But I also think one of the things we discovered is there's a problem when staff steps up and does something that other people step back. And so, you know, he's, the Manhattan Rail Committee has done an amazing job, and not to criticize anyone in Northampton, but in some ways, more than Northampton equivalent committee, because they don't have the staff, so they sort of stepped up for that. So I learned my lesson and haven't had totally hands off on this part. So I get calls from Secretary of Transportation's office, which I figure out they come and ask me a question, and I email Julia quick, and she gives me the response, and I email back as if I know what's going on in the process. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and, and likewise for Trails and Greenways, same sort of thing. We began a few years ago trying to do fundraising projects. We had to fill some gaps, but we didn't have enough money from other sources. We, we began actually with a challenge grant of a wonderful couple who lived part-time part in Northampton. gave us a challenge grant that said, we're going to give you a $2,000 contribution, and we're going to give you $4,000 this year if you can match it. And that was eight years ago, and we said, God, I'm not going to match this $4,000. And we successfully did a fundraising. Craig Delapena and others helped in the process. Um, it began first to help fund things that we couldn't fund, and then it began funding, even when we had other funds. There's some things that, you know, our money comes from different sources. There's some things that weren't eligible. Um, if we're doing a, a bike path that might extend to Haydenville, for example, I can't use my gift taxpayer dollars in Haydenville. And so the funds became wonderful, and with Hampton Trails and Greenway, sort of quickly basically took over the fundraising operation for us. Um, the municipality shouldn't really do the fundraising business, so that's really great. And then the Manhattan Rail Truck Committee, likewise, I can't say enough good things about them, except the one thing I have to remember is I remember going to the ribbon cutting when they opened the Manhattan Rail Trail 10 years ago, or whatever it was, and they were like, this is great, this is wonderful. And then they said, when's North Hampton going to connect to us so we can all have one big network? So it's sort of been a challenge ever since trying to do trying to that. Um, so uh, the other thing I, I would say is, as I criticize people too, um, Nick lied to you all, so you all should leave if you came here because he promised. He promised this great you know, new technology and multimedia and whatever. And so this is a very old fashioned PowerPoint. So if you don't like it, <laughs> um, But so I'm going to walk you through basically a series of things. What's happened already, which I'm going to go through very quickly because I'm going to rest on our laurels, what's happening in the near future, and then sort of what's our longer term plan for that role. Um, and the most recent, I have to say, this actually is a funny story. This is a, one of the most historic <coughs> bridges in town. Um, and the Catholic Church sued the city and said, when we put the bike path through, we took the land, we didn't give it enough money for it. 
And so they sued us for more money, and we said, we don't think we have to give you more money, and, and you can guess where we went. So we went back and forth and said, well, how about this? Yeah, we have this bike path, but we really want is this bridge. Um, because having a 10-foot slayer through the middle of the bridge doesn't give us the right to stop the bridge from collapsing. That the church has no interest in maintaining the bridge, is not serving their needs. So we're giving you some more money, which what you want, and we want the bridge. Um, and so we all left, we shook hands, we were all happy, they got a check, we got a bridge. Smith's Vocational was a wonderful part, and one of the problems with this bridge is it hadn't been maintained in 20 years. And so there were trees, well, I'm exaggerating, but there were big trees growing from the bridge, which were in danger of sort of knocking down the bridge. Um, and so we're proud of being closed in this last year because now it means we can maintain the bridge and um, sort of have it as part of the bike that's in Leeds, right? That's in Leeds, yeah. Uh, so this is, I'm sorry, so the, just so you know in terms of terminology, we call a rail trail a place where you can go on foot or by bicycle, regardless of how, what the condition is. So there is a paved rail trail that goes up to Florence Street in Leeds. There's a trap rock gravel that goes up to Grove, and then there is a um, cinder trail that goes into Williamsburg. So as far as we're concerned, we have a rail trail that goes right to Williamsburg, even though the last mile is finished. So the paved section ends here, or the, the travel ground section ends here. The section that goes across the bridge is the cinders that have been there for a century. Right. There's actually about 20 of these cut stone bridges still standing on the northeast and two of them. Right. This one in Art Street. So then if you go to drive through Art Street, it looks identical to this bridge. This one you can't, if you're on the rail trail, it's not so obvious. You go across this, you don't notice it's there. This is the view from River Road by Berkshire Cable. So if you look at Berkshire Cable and go across, you see this spectacular view of the bridge when you're on the bridge. You know, so great bridge, we need to do more maintenance on it. Basically right now we're caught up with the, the trees coming in. Um, so big picture, so instead of giving you high, high tech and just using all the maps that the Trails and the Greenways did. Um, so this is the new trail map that you can do a plug for. I, I, I forgot there's lots going on, but we Julie actually dropped off the version to go to Paradise Copies to get printed today. Yeah. The proofs should be available back on Wednesday. We're hoping, if all works out, to have those for the bike week festivities, both the bike breakfast on Wednesday and then the ribbon cutting this, this Sunday afterwards. So keep your fingers crossed. But um, also thanks to our sponsors, and I'll be providing more information about them on our website. And I love two things about this map, I have to start. I mean, it's a great map, I love three things. One is a great map. The other is the fact that it took me absolutely no time whatsoever. I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's always my goal. Yeah. But actually, serious in one sense. One thing that always scares us in Northampton is um, the institutional memory, the institutional future of these things. And so groups like Friends of Canyon <coughs> Trails and, and Friends of Northampton Trails and Greenways are really important in terms of long-term institutional memory. Um, but the other reason I'm really happy about it is we really try to send a message that the trail in Northampton, even though it happens to be owned by the city, that the, the town boundaries are totally artificial. Um, the whole reason we renamed Northampton Bike Path and the Monotrack Rail Trail a couple of years ago was we figured for most people bicycling from Belcher down to Williamsburg, they don't care when they go to the safe section to the city section. It's one continuous piece. And so I love the fact that Northampton East Hampton are now working together on this map, and it's a joint map because, again, you know, other than some plaque we put up on the town line at some point, it's going to feel pretty continuous. Um, and East Hampton's going to shoot part of it anyway. So. Um, <laughs> so, this is the overall map. A lot of the views are going to do are just zoom into this. This is on the website. We'll be back in Paradise, obviously. Um, but it's hard to see it at this scale. But, um, so, all of Northampton. The different colors of the roads or how bicycle they are. I'm just going to focus primarily on the rail trails today. Um, so, as I say, we're not going to rest on our laurels. I just want to do it quickly. You know, the, the Northampton bike path. It used to be called the bike path. Craig keeps telling me it's the first bike path in England. It's the first. It's the first municipally built rail trail in southern Okay. Um, so, you know, we're all very proud of that. The back years, but really, what we've done starting four years ago is we built the back path. So, we had this great recreation trail. State had a great recreation trail through Hadley to Amherst. Uh, East Campus had a great recreation trail for eight years. Um, but really, it's not a rail trail network until they get knit together. 
Um, and so in the last few years, that's really what we've done. So we've built, and, and these are, the, the boundaries are totally artificial. These are just based on the contracts. But we've now finished, completed three contracts. Um, the main hands of state hospitals in downtown to Earl Street. Um, the main hands from downtown. The water talk through Leeds, so from Look Park up to uh, Grove. Um, and then the main hand Route 10 that as soon as it really cuts the ribbon, it's going to be done. So that sort of makes the network, that ties them all together. We are within spinning distance of the state rail trail. We're not quite there, but you can see it across the tracks. You can take your life in your own hand across the tracks. Um, you can wave to people on the side of the tracks, and we connect these things. So you know, really is one overall network. Um, at the same time, you know, Nick mentioned Jackson Street. At the same time, we have this network that goes through town. We've had metrics for a number of years that we want 65% of the city's population within easy access to the bike path. Um, we're now trying to change that to 75%. Um, and what that means is it's great to have a trail that on a map is close to your home, but if you can't get there, it doesn't do you much good. You know, so recently I lived off South Street, and so I live a third of a mile from the trail. But there's, you can't get there, you can't get there. So we're trying to disconnect. So Jackson Street was, and Ice Pond is in two spurs that we've done. Um, Ice Pond, this is, those of you know, this is um, Ice Pond Subdivision, Rocky Hill, co-housing project here. It looks like an orphan. If you go up here, the sign actually says Manion Rail Trail Spur. And it's not that we're idiots and no, it doesn't connect. It's that the overall vision is that this becomes the spur and gets down here. And if a woman hits a hole and sells the property in between, we're all see that trail in the near future. So, you know, this, and, and this trail, you see some of the slides, this trail is eventually going to go all the way out to the Ryan Road School and eventually out to West Farms. So that's, that spur really connects. So we're looking, but even as it is, this trail is about half a mile. And yet, if you live here and are going downtown, and you go this way, first you have to be a lot greater than I am to bicycle. And second, that's about a mile going around. And it's not a fun one. Whereas if you cut through, it's a short one. So we look at places anywhere in town we can do these shortcuts that suddenly make it much more desirable. So even today, if you live here, you short ride, and then the sidewalks all the way to town, there's more traffic moves. Um, so those sort of networks, those cut throughs, are a lot of our focus. With the main backbone done, we look at some big projects we're going to talk about, extend the backbone, and lots of little projects to connect it to different neighborhoods. Um, so, you know, you all heard of this, but so I guess I'm wrong. This is 11 o'clock now? Yeah, it's 11. Okay, so ignore this office piece. That's 10. Seven. Because we need 11 to 12 to move. That's right, that's right. So it is 10. It is 10. Okay, it's okay. okay. so code 10. <laughs> that also is correct. Bagels and music. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things besides being sort of a fun party, one of the reasons, this is, is nominally a ribbon cutting for this one section of trail from Grove Street in Northampton to Ferry Street in, in East Hampton and, and the trail there. But more importantly, it is sort of that, that golden mile. We keep talking about putting a, a, a golden spike on the bridge. Um, Mass DOT keeps saying we're going to put a golden uh, uh, bollard on the bridge. But this sort of, <laughs> yeah. So this connects the other. So it's a much more important party than, than just for a, so future pieces, and I get no credit for this, this is always Hampton, but East Hampton is working on two connections, both of which contracts have been signed and they're in mobilization phase now. I'm not sure if they started doing work, but the work's underway and, and primarily it's been over the this year. So if you know the trail in East Hampton didn't quite go as far south as they planned to go because of asbestos, that slowed them down for eight years. That's now been solved. They've, they've mobilized the contractor thinks they're going to do the majority of work this year, I think. Um, that should be wing, because that's what the map went to paradise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the contract, with it, these projects are, are pretty fast. The contract Mass Highway gave them two construction seasons this year and next year, but the contractor seems to think they can all do it this year. Likewise, the Manhattan River Bridge. This was the one disadvantage of getting stimulus money. We had a very tight deadline. Our project at East Camp, the one we're cutting ribbon on, was originally going to include the bridge, um, and it clearly couldn't quite be done. It was totally designed, it was totally ready, and then Mass Highway had a minor complaint which actually couldn't be built. They said it worked perfectly once it's in place, but you couldn't actually build it. <laughs> um, this is a minor problem. Um, so it had to be redesigned, it got pushed back, and East Hampton, to their credit, took over all the work. The, the process, because of the main and rail trails in both towns, North Hampton was willing to take the lead because a majority of the mileage was in North Hampton. But once the bridge was cut out, 
I got out doing my work, it was great. But likewise, the contractor who got that bid, who has two years, has said they're going to do it this year. There'd be punch lists, some minor stuff will get done next year, but most will be done. Um, so that would really be fun. Right now, you can go all in at these camps and just go around the Manhattan River for a short section. But once it's connected together, it really becomes you know, this wonderful experience. Um, and the Manhattan River, if you cross the Mill River on the, the bridge, on the bike path, the Manhattan River would be the same thing, even more, because you're a little bit higher in elevation. So those two bridge crossings, along the Connecticut River, so it's most spectacular parts of, of our world now. We all try that work. So the other thing that's going to happen this summer is a spur up to the State Hospital. Now, in full disclosure, I've moved to the State Hospital, so this is my backyard. But this is well underway before I moved there, so I'm not biased. Um, but if, if any of you drive down Earl Street, you see the sidewalks that most for Earl Street are four feet wide, and suddenly they jump out to eight feet. That's because when we redid Earl Street a couple years ago, we knew this was coming. So if you go down the rail trail from downtown to Hampton, you cross the Mill River, you go past a bunch of stockade fence, right behind the stockade fence in a couple months to the new trail. That cuts from there. So here's the entrance on, on Earl Street. You'll cut off to Earl Street and cross and go off the hill to see hospital. One section will be very steep, so it'll be a real test. Those of you who like bikes are about 12% grade, you can get an experience here. You can walk your bike. But it was something to connect that, that neighborhood. Um, further down the line, um, but within the next two to three years, is two important connections. Admission of Hampton bike path is within spitting distance of the state trail, um, and people now get there in a very unsafe way. We're looking at two ways to improve the connections. The first is um, at North Street. So this is North Street, those of you who know um, Dunkin' Donuts, the corn shop, the old um, armory building, whatever your landmark is. Um, there's a, a, the railroad tracks and the bike path cross North Street. So we're going to do an off-ramp right on the south side of North Street, it's called Edwards Square. Um, and that's going to come into North Street, and so it will do two important things. It will, it will serve hundreds of homes in Ward, in Ward 3, who right now can look at the bike path, but bike can't, can't quite get onto it. And then we'll provide a temporary access from the city bike path to the state bike path. Um, um, so that should be done, well, sort of in my court, we've got city council for final and then to maintain again. We hope to go to construction this summer. There's a chance we'll do it until next spring. But I, 2011, 2012, that can actually be Likewise, the important thing is the Amtrak is coming back to Northampton unless Congress takes away all the money. Right now it's funded. Um, Congress. This, this is, so Amtrak right now goes for Amherst. It's going to be switching to going from Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, Greenfield, uh, and Deerfield, and, and, and uh, um, Brattleboro, and connect the old line. It will make Amtrak runs 45 minutes shorter than it's been. It will come through Northampton. Um, it's federal funds. The state match to the federal funds is important enough bike paths. So the feds give us lots of bike path money. The state will be in return for building a tunnel underneath the rail. Um, you know, as you watch the federal budget, the federal, the Congress has withdrawn some of the high-speed rail money. Um, we believe it's it's the money which some governments gave up. It's like Florida returned some money, um, and so some of that money is being grabbed back. Again, this is still a work in progress, but as far as we know, none of our money is threatened. So we expect the Amtrak to come back, and obviously, with the Amtrak coming back, we expect the tunnel to be here. So that tunnel's under design now. The last we heard, and it could change, we're looking at 2012 construction. Um, so 2012, there'd be a tunnel there. If you, if you go to the, take the bike path up to Wendy's, the main trail cuts left. And you actually see a spur that goes forward 50 feet and into the middle of nowhere. Um, that was deliberate. That middle of nowhere is exactly the lead in for this tunnel. Um, and in fact, if you keep going, if you walk past where the tunnel is, and keep going in the backyard of Walgreens, you're going to suddenly see a bike path to nowhere that ends there. Um, and that was when Walgreens got built, a condition of permits to build a bike path to nowhere, the tunnel would then connect to it. So when you come from Amherst, you come underneath the tunnel, you can turn right and go up to Walgreens and King Street, or left to go to the main spot, the spot of the trail. So those, those will all be connected. Um, and this is an old air photo, unfortunately, um, but this is where we're talking about the tunnel to the state trail. So again, that's in process. When we do fundraising, we think this is on. We think this is going forward. We don't need money for this. We don't need permissions. 
we were sort of waiting for everything to be um, We also got a grant through the help of Mass Bike, the Camden Trails and Greenways, from the state. This is federal money that's passed to the state. Um, that we joined the part of everybody else for doing a wayfinding uh, sign system. So if you go to our industry building, you can see our new signs that are under construction even as we speak. Um, we're going to put up, I think, 10 of these. Um, one in East Hampton, I think. One in Mass Audubon, property, and the rest are mostly access points along there. So obviously we couldn't do all the access points. We're doing the major ones where we expect people to be some wayfinding help. So, um, at Earl Street, uh, a couple downtown, uh, at North Street, at King Street, a couple in Florence, a couple in Leeds, and I got the exact location. So the, um, the main sign is obviously you know, paying homage to old railroad bridges. Um, I will say one thing up front, don't cross off to say the bridge is rusting. This is what's called cordon steel, it's called weathering steel. It never needs painting, which is wonderful, and it deliberately gets rusted. So all the new rail trail bridges have this, and everyone calls and says, you've got to paint it. And so we never paint it, it's zero maintenance, which is great. But to save a tiny bit of money, particularly hazardous chemicals, we're not pre-treating those bridges that we put up and pre-rusted. They apply to acid in the factory, so they look pre-rusted. This bridge is coming out unrusted, which six months of weather will do. So it will come out with rust for six months, and that layer of rust will protect it forever, and it will hopefully look like rare it is. Um, and Julia, what? Oh, Julia gets partial credit. Julia came to one of our planning meetings where we were looking at different kiosk designs, and she was like totally quiet. And then she said, I can't stand it anymore. This is an arts town. We really need a kiosk that reflects that arts piece. So these are our Julia Reisman Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are going to put a sign on here as well, I guess. So the signs are going to basically be big signs. Um, um, big signs, sort of wayfinding the overall network in the area that's zoomed in, um, and we got to lay them out that we expect to have these things all happen in the next couple of months. Um, just briefly, I'm a planner, so I can't just talk about projects, I can talk about planning, sort of where we go on these things. Um, we're required in order to be eligible for certain federal and state funds to open space and recreation. We do this every five to seven years. Um, and most communities around the state have open space and recreation plans. Our plan, and, and our recreation plan has talked about bike paths for a number of years. When we redid our bike path, our, our plan this last winter, we said, we really want to give rail trails their due. We want to talk about how important they are. Um, and so the plan itself is now an open space recreation and multi-use trail plan. I know it doesn't sound like a big accomplishment, but it's that part of institutionalizing things. About saying that this is, you know, we have recreation resources, we have multi-use trail resources, we have conservation resources, we want to sort of protect them all. Um, this is important for me. We've been working on rail trails for about a dozen years. So all the trails you see, the $13 million, $14 million of trails that have been built in the last three years, um, some of those started 12 years ago. So there's a long lead time. So with this network almost done, we need to think about what are the trails we're doing next year, seven years from now, 21 years from now. So that part of the plan is doing is sort of identifying what would an overall network look like. It's important for two reasons. As a planner, it's important to think about where our projects were going forward. It's also important for the planning board because every time we have this overall map of where things go, and every time a developer does a project that happens to be in that land, we expect them to do those pieces. So the reason that Ice Pond Spur is built where it was is because we have a master plan. The reason the Walgreen map and Walgreens trails built where it was to this master plan. So when Walgreens came in, we said, great, give us $150,000 for traffic mitigation, or give us this rail trail and give us $70,000 for traffic mitigation. Um, and so we were sort of set to go. And so that having that overall vision for where we're going is really important. Um, my planning board chair doesn't like it because we show a trail going right through his house, but other than that, it <laughs> So these numbers are just from different objectives in this comprehensive plan that the multi-use trail plan that are relevant to this discussion. But as I said, one of our goals is to change our metrics, to change our goal from being putting trails with an access, easy access to 75% of our population. There's some people, you know, if you want to live on a mountain in the western part of the city, that's great, but we're just never going to provide rail trail access to you. But sort of all the, our goal is that all those dense urban neighborhoods and even dense suburban neighborhoods 
we want to get real trails that this surf in. So these are the trails, I think I made more slides in more detail, that we're trying to get. These are sort of our long-term vision. Um, I just want to go through, through them all. The first is this one we're calling the Pennyberg Greenway. Um, we want to make sure as we take the Nuwana Rail Trail, that Craig says we should rename to the Mass Central Rail Trail, that if you take that to Damon Road, that you can eventually bicycle all the way up to Hatfield um, in a continuous safe trail. Um, and then once you get to Hatfield, there's a network of safe roads, and so you don't really need much more. And so that's a long term project. It involves some different challenges from where the state rail trail crosses Damon Road up to Drossel's funeral home. It's going to be something on the road bed itself. We had originally thought about um, bike lanes. We're now thinking about it's called cycle tracks, basically a trail that's separated from the road, which allows us to put the entire trail on the east side of the road. It doesn't make people cross the road. So we're playing with sort of being able to go again, Coolidge Bridge, the curve, the sharp curve of Damon Road, Drossel's funeral home. It's trying to get that far with the cycle tracks, and then basically trying to cut through, this is Elwell Conservation Area, trying to cut through Elwell Conservation Area, um, cut through what's eventually going to be a boathouse we're going to build in the river, and then go all the way up to Hatfield. Some major challenges, this is a many, many year project, and potentially it's not all possible. There's a spot right here where we actually have concerns the railroad may tumble into the river. Um, and we have to put the, the rail trail on the river side of the railroad. And so that one pinch point, then it kills us with that pinch point. Um, so, you know, lots of challenges going forward. Um, our first step, we got some small grants um, to do the original survey. We have a big grant application before the CPA. If any of you want to go to the CPA next Wednesday, we'd love to have more voices um, to get them to support it. Um, and that's going to go forward in whatever pace it gets funded. The timing of this is largely based on how quickly we get funded for the project. Um, so further west, just so that you know, the long-term vision is how we get west. This area is hard to serve for rail trail because, well, two things. First, there was no railroad originally. So it's really hard. It's no, for all the complications we have with rail trail, and there are a lot of complications along the way, there were only a couple property routes we could deal with. Um, and it was a good roadbed that we could put it on. Um, now, the roadbed was full of hazardous waste, which had its own complication, but at least it was fairly <laughs> This has no hazardous waste, but it has a lot of different property owners and a lot of structural problems in terms of soil. And so the challenge is how do we get out? But you know, we have a beginning right here. You know, we're trying to create a trail up here. We have a beginning here. And we play with a couple of routes. We already have a right away through here. Um, so we're there. We'd like to get to this neighborhood. Once you get to this neighborhood, we're not pure, but I think it's to be a separate trail. Once you get to say we're very safe riding, so here's one of our elementary schools. So if we get this far, we suddenly serve this whole neighborhood. Um, likewise, we'd like to figure out a way how to get out here. We have, if you see this, we actually have a tiny trail over here. This one's trap rock gravel. It was done as part of a subdivision. It's never going to be paved too far out. But we'd like to figure out how to get all the way out here. We have this is trap rock gravel. There's a new subdivision being built right here. And as a condition of that project, we're probably going to get a trap rock gravel permit up to here, or trail up to here. This is a conservation area, and we acquired that. We kept the right away for trail. So, you know, again, years and years off, but it is how these things all fit together. Um, and we think we're going to get there slowly. Um, this is the one I mentioned before earlier. Um, so, this is off the South Street. Um, this is, you know, you have this, this large neighborhood with a few hundred homes off South Street. It doesn't, it looks like it's close to the rail trail and doesn't have easy access. Um, and so how to get there, this is, I mean, you know, the Hampton Veterinary Clinic. Um, this is their property, and they agreed to donate this small sliver of property to the city. So that's the first piece. Um, we got a permit from the planning board where they gave us the property for free. They get credit for it for zoning purposes, and that brings us a tenth of the way to, to rail trail. We had a Smith College engineering class a couple of years ago, work on how it could actually work. They would basically get the feasibility and convince us as possible. We need a lot more work together. So, again, moving forward, it has some complication of its own. Um, a couple projects going on in VA long term. If you look at the rail trail, you see the rail trail goes up to Bridge Road, and then suddenly there's this weird thing to look park and comes back. Well, that's because we wanted to minimize road crossings. The actual railroad went right up here, and, and we didn't want to follow that. But we're now playing with. 
this is the main spine, but can we, there's another old railroad right away that goes through here. Can we do rail trail up to here, and then on this side of the road, up the traffic signal to go across? So that's sort of, you know, thinking about that. Um, so this is the, the edge of the roundabout. This is where the Hampton bike path ends, crossing here, and actually the woods right here is the old railroad right away. Um, and then, likewise, at the same time, we have funding for a park and ride lot at the VA hospital. Not that sexy for the park and ride lot, but um, one of the reasons it's really useful for us is we're really trying to avoid having empty parking lots. So we want to have places for people to get to the bike path and ride on it, but not have empty asphalt. So we tried to multitask areas. We did the first one of these in Sheldon Field. We acquired Sheldon Field about five years ago. We used to lease it when we acquired it. We put a park and ride there that serves commuters during the day and in the afternoon it serves recreation users. Um, the park and ride lot of VA would be the same thing. The feds will build it. The feds will put a new signal in at Route 9 to have a pedestrian phase. Probably have a ramp up to the bike path. You can use the park and ride lot whether you're commuting to work in Amherst or, or trying to get in the bike path or trying to sneak into the park. <laughs> uh, so then this is the, the Haydenville line, as I said, our bike path, you know, what we call, what people think of as a bike path goes up to Grove Ave, but we think of the rail trail as going all the way into Haydenville. Um, we had an opportunity for buying a small piece of land in Haydenville. This is the sort of thing we do with contributions, I couldn't use tax money. So we bought the land in Haydenville, we put it an easement on it, preserve the property for rail trail, and then we gave it to the to town of Williamsburg. Um, and town meeting was willing to vote. It's, it's, it's the best $5,000 check we ever wrote. <laughs> yeah. That well, was just wonderful. And it's still good. I mean, right now it's wonderful because it's the tap of the river right there, so it's nice to go there. And we're only doing so much in Williamsburg. It may always be a dead end, it may not be. No secret, you know, there's opportunities to go north, that's very controversial. Opportunities to go east and opportunities to go west, and hopefully one of those three directions will someday connect. And once you're at the roads, there's a, a safe, you know, road network. You know. So that becomes an important piece at some point. Um, State so Hospital, I mentioned already the first piece going on this summer, which would go from uh, the bike path at Earl Street up to my backyard uh, at State Hospital. But the long term, this is very long term because this requires special legislation from the state and there may be some opposition from the agriculture community. The long term is to connect that bridge all the way through the state hospital, which the developers doing, that's their job, all the way through the ag land on the existing trail, so it wouldn't be any new encroachment. A new bridge um, across um, here, and then you're behind the high school. Because part of our prayers has been, how do you get people to skip to do, we spent $150 per bus per day in North Canada. Um, if you have rail trails that save just one bus, $150 times 180 days per year is a lot of money. And so obviously, we, if we start changing that political equation and make it a little bit easier for kids to bicycle to school instead of needing to be bused, that's cheaper for the community and healthier for kids. And so this becomes a real opportunity for that. So hopefully that's going to happen. Uh, it's not, the 2011 is just here. This is like 2050 or something. Before we go. <laughs> um, so, this is the overall graphics. Our graphics are more functional. Your graphics are much prettier. But this is just sort of all the different network pieces that we're talking about. I focused on sort of big ones. There are a few smaller ones along the way, which we're playing with. Some of them are really short. You know, here's a tiny one that unless you know this neighborhood, you've never used. But this is um, Clark Avenue, which is Dead End Street. And this is, I think I was wrong. Um, very short distance, maybe 100 yards between the two. Um, and just a little connection, we don't want a road, but a little connection would suddenly open up, you know, much more opportunities to connect different campuses together. So we see these opportunities, some for those of you who want to ride for 50 miles, and some who want to walk a quarter mile and visit your neighbor, borrow sugar, and not have to get your car. And so on this map, there's a few of the small things scattered there. Um, the other one that's not, this is sort of generally about making the world safer for bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, the other thing we're working on is, are there opportunities to narrow Main Street and narrow King Street? We just have some cult consultants here from Nelson Nygaard helping us think about that. Um, on Main Street in particular, we're looking at doing road dieting. We make Main Street one direction, one lane in each direction. Um, still have areas if you're waiting for a parking spot, a parking get by you. 
And the signature project for that is probably extending this to build a small park in Fresno Hall. And you go to Warwick City, parks aren't about sizes, they're about you know, where things happen. A tiny little park with a couple hundred square feet, you know, particularly on a sharp curve in the street, can really become a real focal point. But at the same time, this is a really long and really unsafe crosswalk. It can make the street much safer and much narrower. Um, and so it can become a real significant place. And you know, shameless promotion, if anyone wants to go on Wednesday during the public comment period, we love all the support we can get um, for both projects. I, at this point, I don't think they're going to fund the City Hall Park, but you know, you can all persuade them to fund it. So um, other things, the last thing, I think last thing to think about the space plan, just generally think about public awareness. Most of these you know is the kiosk. This is a friend from Hampton sign. Uh, um, maps. This is we're trying to get a Google Maps mashup for every recreation area in town. We're just generally trying to think about how people think about things differently. Um, one thing we're doing, for example, Manhattan Rail Trail. We chose that name because we want to do the same thing as East Hampton, so it's one continuous name. But we also want to pay, pay homage to New Haven and North Hampton Canal. You know, if you go to IKEA in New Haven, that's Canal Street that goes to IKEA. You know, we'd love the, the canal we meant to be memorialized all the way up North Hampton. And so we are in a small grant from Kodak at fifteen hundred dollars. So one of the chaos is going to include some history of the canal and we're trying to draw attention to that. The Route 10 bridge will eventually have a sign that says Manhattan Rail Trail, Mahavis North Hampton Canal, Greenway. We're trying to get the those names going so lots of these things. It's funny. You go on the canal, and I knew the canal was here with another history. But you will see, for example, when you do the ribbon cutting, when you walk up a little bit, you'll see some of the water structures that provided water for the canal when it was here. So there's still there. You know, still this area in particular, from Earl Street to East Hampton, has the clearest memory. The drainage ditch that looks very exciting is the canal. Um, it's a little straighter than most drainage ditches, um, and there's a huge. Uh, my big fear, the same sort of, what, what, what do you call your fill in the hole? Sinkhole. Sinkhole. My fear is the same thing here. But is, if you go off the rail road, to the, the rail trail, and walk down the woods, you see this massive granite structure. Um, it's absolutely spectacular. It's a huge granite box culvert that was there on the rail when the canal was there. Um, so, funding, you know, you guys have been great. Thank you. Um, we, have a, you know, we, we have this challenge match. We will also, because again, we think about institutionalizing things. We've set up some funds not through the city. The city's a wonderful place for the, the center of the universe, but obviously cities can be political, administrations can change. So we set up two funds that aren't part of the city. We set up an endowment fund at Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts. It's their money, not ours. We're not allowed to touch the principal, but the interest comes into the city unless it's due maintenance. And so it gives people some assurance it's, it's um, you know, politics free. And a lot of people really supported that endowment. Um, and so it's growing slowly but steadily. Um, and then we also have another, which is a projects fund. And the projects fund lets us pay for things. Again, we, we did a project, we're doing a project in Hatfield now. We did a project in Williamsburg. It lets us pay for things that maybe I can't use city dollars for. Um, so this is all kind of great. Um, and then just quickly, you know, we, we now have three big bike lanes. When we did the bike lanes in Route 66, we tripled our, our bike lane mileage. Um, bike lanes are often great, sometimes they feel good. You feel good this bike lane there, it doesn't necessarily mean you're much safer. We're playing with these cycle tracks, basically just, uh, I don't know this. Um, but this, uh, this is from some of the slides, but you know, basically physically separating the bike lane, the bicycle lane from the road. We're looking right now on South Street for this and on King Street for this. We hope there's other places as well, but those two we hope to move forward sooner rather than later. There's you know, lots of different designs. There's one from Cambridge. Um, so different ways of doing these things. And you know, the design varies from place to place, but it is really how do you give motorists some protection. The, the figures are bike lanes get people to switch a little bit to bicycling, but these separate tracks are much more dramatic. Because a lot of people like me who's a wimp, or particularly when I'm bicycling with my teenage daughter, who's really a wimp, that we want more of that separation. Um, and then you know, I told Deb when she first came, I was worried she was here because some people don't think roundabouts are great for bicyclists, but I'm not one of those people. Um, and so we have one roundabout in the park. We're working upon at least a feasibility phase, three other roundabouts that may go somewhere, but um, one at uh, North King Street in Hatfield, 
uh, Long Beach Mass Highways is looking at, and Collins and Pleasant and Long Beach Mass Highways doing as part of a much larger complicated project, Exit 19. So we have some potential for other things. Um, uh, we, I was really hoping we were going to make a good announcement today. I don't know if it's going to be a good announcement or a bad announcement. So we applied for Bicycle Friend of the City. A few years ago, we got honorable mention. Um, we reapplied because we've done more stuff. And they made the decision today, but unfortunately, they haven't announced it today. So <laughs> someone knows the decision, but we know the next um, so we hope we hope we get it. Um, it's interesting as part of their assessment for us. One of the comments they did have is, "We do a great job at trails. We don't do as good a job at bicycle education." Um, there's actually something in the paper today about someone setting up a business to bicycle education. We're not trying to compete with that, but we'd love to get more help on that sort of thing. Yeah. Before we leave today, just at a small level, um, you can take one of these little things that says "Watch for bikes" that you put in your rearview mirror. So you don't endorse somebody, um, but we're trying to think of how we get that kind of word out. These kind of things, we'd love to help anyone we can to, to get better bicycle education. And bicycle education is both to educate motorists about bicycles and to educate bicyclists about. Um, and then we have another intern. We do have other interns. Um, another intern who's helping us put to, with East Hampton put together a nomination for National Recreation Trails for the Rail Trail. Basically, the North South Rail Trail from the Williamsburg line down to the Southampton line. Um, and that's in process, we plan to submit. This means absolutely nothing in terms of money or anything else. It's mostly because we want to help people stay at Craig's Inn. We want to help the tourist business and if people see a benefit for bike paths. And that little green line on the map makes a huge difference. When you plan your next vacation, you don't necessarily notice the little bike paths that are just as good as the National Recreation Trails. And so we just want to be on those maps. Um, and that's it. Manhattan River, and I thought the trail was entirely on this side of the river, on one side of the river. So, do you want to want to be from the second one? Yes. What what is the bridge of the Manhattan River? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Where is that? And where is it? The, I can uh, answer that if you want, because of the being on the JT Steve. What's the one of the Manhattan River? Because it's your um, right. Great question. Right. It's, uh, do you know where Lovefield Street is? Yes. Uh, it, the trail ends right where Lovefield Street comes um, into uh, O'Neill. O'Neill. Yeah. yeah. And, and right there, the Manhattan River, the Man, um, sorry, the, um, the Manhattan River comes underneath there. So there's a sec there's about a 900 foot gap in the trail right there until they finish that bridge. And then they'll pave the, that gap through. Oh, this, okay. On this map, here's the trail yeah. in There's a little gap right here where the Manhattan River goes through. Um, you know where the fork is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you fork towards Northampton, it's just there it ends. But you can go on the road for 900 right. feet to Lovefield Street and then get back on. So the easiest way to think of it, there's a, there's a bridge for cars, and then over to the side, there was a railroad bridge. Yeah. Okay, I, I know the abutment for that. Okay, I, didn't, I, I somehow didn't even notice the river was there. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's way down. Is there, has there been any advertising in Rails to Trail magazine about our bicycle network? Not from us. So we've, we've done nothing outside the community. I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, there was a lovely thing on the Friends of the Manhattan one was three years ago. Kind of a little, kind of a smaller piece. We're working to pitch this once we get this map. You know, we think that would be a great kind of end of cover story for them to kind of see it come together. They were wanting us to have it connected, and they may still want that kind of to wait until the, the tunnel to connect them. But nonetheless, I think it's exciting to kind of pull it together. So we, they're on our list. We keep them apprised, and I keep on nudging them every now and then. But we'll see how it goes. With the signage, are you going to put the mileage? You know, uh, when you uh, ride to East Hampton. You know exactly we've gone one mile and two miles and three miles. And yeah. I like that. So. We don't have plans for mileage along the trail. We do have plans on those, those waste of finding signs. Yeah. They're going to show the mileage points between major destinations, major intersections. Obviously, one of the big population centers, urban areas, is uh, Olio. And I know it looks like there's a trail running along Route 5, but it's not. Obvious to me that it exists. I guess Craig. Craig has a regional stuff more than I do. The, the reason you see the wide shoulders on Route 5 in the area of where Mountain Park was, the Mountain Ski area, is 
because there was a double track trolley right of way up there called the 30s, and the trolley was in the center of the road. The automobiles were on the outsides of the layout, road layout. When the trolley went away, the road went into the center, and then it had big shoulders for a bike route. But it doesn't fit the specifications to be called a bike route for mass DOT standards. So it's sort of like a forgotten thing. But the, it's actually knitting together from, uh, from downtown Polio with the canal walk. There's an effort to knit together the canal walk into the, the, uh, the Olmsted Park, known as Pulaski Park, along the river. Uh, Marvin is aware of some improvements to develop a better connection across the high-speed NASCAR track rotary on uh, Route 202 <laughs> to get up to the islands to connect to that wide roadway. So about five more years. Right, it, you know, the hope is to connect them West all. Westfield is doing this big project that could absorb millions and millions of dollars. They're trying to do rail trail through towns um, that hit the river. So there is an attempt to connect them all to you hate it. Was that? All the way from oh, the right. 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 Yeah. And, well, we have it, and then there's this other network immersion yeah. on the east side of the Bennett River to connect across to that as well. Yeah. Right. Is there any thought to plow the path of the Northampton? No. Um, so the Northampton plan, you know, it's always funding contingent. The Northampton plan is to go from Earl Street, eventually, you know, to, wow. from Earl, to plow from Earl Street all the way up to Florence Street. And then that sort of the spine serves the most number of students and the most number of people. Um, but not, not to plow south, both because East Hampton isn't and because frankly there's not many people there. And the state won't, won't has at least this policy against you know, the point of policy against plowing. In, in, in my mind, having that area plowed from Earl and Grove all the way up to where we have it by Acme, uh, by yeah. King Street, is yeah. critical because yeah. if we think about what the access looks like when it's snowy on King Street, those sidewalks aren't great to begin with when they get snowed in. So keeping that as a pathway for kids and others during the winter, I think, is really critical. This was a really tough winter, and you know, I think for everyone. And you know, so so we continue to try to work with with the mayor's office, which is where those priorities come from. Keep the city council apprised of that, and also really to encourage the DPW, who've been very supportive. But I think that's critical that to have that central spine. Cloud, uh, you know, to make it accessible year-round. An interesting, let me just follow up on the snow plowing issue. Uh, about five years ago, when the path in Florence was first plowed, I cast this evidence out to Eastern Mass, and was outreached by some folks with the Minuteman Trail in Arlington about plowing the Minuteman Rail Trail, where the town government in Arlington said it couldn't be done. And yet we showed the evidence that it had been done in Florence. City of North and, and lo and behold, it took hold there. There was a group, an advocacy group, that actually got some traction with the town government, and they funded it outside of the government coffers. And they come to find out it was only like $2,500. <laughs> so you can have this sort of mysterious, big, huge number that you really can't figure out how much it will cost until you do it yourself. <laughs> and then it's not so much money. So I'd like to see the Friends of the Manhattan Rail Trail start to fundraise that out once everything connects up. Why not prove that it's not such an onerous, huge amount of money as it was found in Arlington and actually Lexington as well now, too. How you doing? I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Steve Mitchell from Simsbury, Connecticut, and I'm a board member of the East Coast Greenway. Uh, and you guys are doing a great job up here. I'm going to connect a couple of thoughts that you had. Uh, Simsbury, as you may know, is the first bike-friendly community in southern New England. We got the designation last year, and it is a multiplex, complex process to go through. Um, and <laughs> I just want to invite you all. This weekend, we have a, a we're very kind of it's bizarre. The East Coast Greenway Board meeting is going to be held in Simsbury, Connecticut. Uh, the smallest town ever hosts this meeting. Uh, slated to come is uh, Governor Malloy, Senator Blumenthal. Chris Murphy, unfortunately, is out of the country, but we were going to have a senator, a congressman, and, uh, and a governor. Um, and our governor, new governor, it happens to be a very green, friendly guy with no money. But um, <laughs> we're figuring that out. 
Um, but anyway, I, I'm gonna I left some flyers here because if you want to do the year, I don't want to take you away from your trail cleanup here on Saturday. Um, but there's a ride, like a warm up for the weekend, to go from New Haven to Simsbury. 62% uh, of that ride is on a rail trail, is on the canal line, uh, leaving from the dawn of cycling flat, Pierre or something like that, from uh, New Haven Green uh, up to Simsbury Historical Society. Uh, and there will actually be a bus that goes from Simsbury down to New Haven, uh, leaving Simsbury at 9.30 when we go on our way. Saturday? Friday. Friday. The board meeting is always an all day Saturday because the board meeting, or the trail council meeting, of which Craig is your, your Massachusetts representative, the trail council meeting goes from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and it's the whole discussion of the entire rail trail from Key West to Canada. Yes, yeah, so that's and the, if you can explain to people actually. Yeah, what the East Coast is. Okay, second. for those who haven't done the, the East Coast Greenway is going to link Key West, Florida with Canada. It's a 2,800 mile bike path. And the first time I heard uh, Craig's counterpart, Bill O'Neill, talk about this down in Simsbury, Connecticut in 2004, I thought he was like, on, I thought this guy was whack until he said at the very end, it's 15% done. And now it is over 25% done. So we are making great progress. But to kind of weave in a couple comments that were made in this room, and I've just been kind of privileged with Tom Sexton and a few other groups down in the Connecticut area. By the way, Rails to Trails Conservancy is seriously considering the southern New England area for their soldier ride for 2012. Wow. So please let that be an inspiration to everyone in this room. Let's keep working together. And that, that dream of having you know, I love seeing young people in the room. I'm looking at you. I, I was at Elm City Cycling down in New Haven when I was saying, Craig, that the average age in the room was about this size is about 30 years old. You know, so it's just great to see people of your generation and, and, and coming up. And But East Coast Greenway, there's going to be many spines off it. Um, and if you're interested, we welcome you down to Sims, in, you know, New Haven, Rock, New Haven, this is where we're at on Friday, or the uh, Eno Hall is the entire rail trail thing. Uh, if you want to skip that. But Sarah Clean Trail. <laughs> <laughs> and we have information about the East Coast Greenway on our website as well. So I have one question and just a, a couple of quick comments. Um, I'll give a question first and then the comments. Uh, I'm curious as to know when any of the um, outcomes from the charrette about King Street, when we might see an actual improvement there. Um, and then I'd also just like to say about the, the North South route. Um, last year, my wife and I completed the 410 mile ride from the source of the Connecticut River to the sea. Um, and then we started looking around for other places to go. And I think that this year, we're going to do in pieces the route of the North Bank and New Haven Canal. Um, because in part, we realized that so much of it was built. Uh, so we're we'll hopefully get a. Uh, we get an early look at that. Mm -hmm. So and when, change the signs. We go down there and it says Farmington Canal. Changes. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. I noticed yeah. there is a. There, isn't there a Farmington Canal group down there? Yeah, they do great work. Yeah, yeah, we come to change the news. So I'm, I'm curious when we might see some actual restriping or lane narrowing or. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be one of the funding things. That's one of the reasons I did my plug for CPA is we see City Hall as being, you know. There's a political self. We need to show people that this works. And we see City Hall, the City Hall of Narrow, as being sort of a marquee project. So if CPA funds it, then I would hope we would do a design this year. We, we already planned the design. We're going to bring in Jersey Barriers and, and basically show where the park would be and then get, help people, get people out to help design it. So if it's funded, we could be doing design this year and construction, maybe the fall, more likely the spring. If it's not funded, we look for other sources of funding. But, but that project, in the, the way you have it laid out now, that project would be done before anything else. Before King Street? Before King Street. Yeah, Main Street's definitely easier than King Street. The, the issue, those you don't know, narrowing streets, there's lots of literature out there. The narrowing streets up to about 20,000 cars a day works. Um, Main Street is about 16,000 cars a day. We're confident we can easily make that work. King Street, between Stop and Shop and basically Dayton Road, is about 22,000 cars a day. And so we could well be the highest volume traffic to Palm Street in the country. And the question is, are we willing to be that sort of 
you know, we're willing to break the ground for them. So we may or may not be willing to. But up to the bike path, our traffic is below 20,000. So if I had my way, and I could decide this, I'd phase it, I'd do Main Street first, I'd do King Street, up to the bike path, we get a track record, then we go north of that. In the meantime, other people in the country, the volumes elsewhere in the country keep going up. <coughs> so that's my piece, and the reality is, and, and you would know this, but the funding, there's no way we're ever going to get $15 million to do all King Street anyway. So breaking into pieces is a better way for a funding cycle anyway. The first phase, because we already had it in design, the North Summer King Street intersection is in the process of being designed. We put that on hold to finish the shred. We're going to ask them to revisit their design with that in mind. So it's possible that intersection would do some elements sooner. Even the intersection is unfunded. You might get to design and get in the queue, and it might get built three years later. So City Hall Park fastest, Summer King next to three years, all this stuff following. There might be little pieces. Uh, People's Bank is applying to do a bank in the corner of Barrett Street and King. Um, we can't narrow the entire street there in one spot. It wouldn't work. But we certainly might kick the curb out five feet and put a cycle track in the curb. So basically eat up the bike lane, or eat up the shoulder, and narrow the street and put a cycle track. So there may be pieces as projects go forward. Thank you. Uh, have you figured out a way to use the CPA funds for anything? Yeah, but that King Street one, um, I mean, the Main Street one, absolutely. I mean, it's eligible to do park. So Main Street Park is, is, is eligible, and it's eligible to do streetscape improvements. So CPA can sort of do that. At this point, quite frankly, um, from the discussion with CPA, I'm not sure how well it's going to score in this ramp. But that's, you know, that would be a great process. So this, this would definitely be an eligible CPA project. Yeah, I'm from uh, Southampton, so uh, that street is a big wide street. I probably need uh, a lot of political help. Yeah, you know, we have hundred thousand dollars for the Manning Rail Trail from um, Earl Street to East Hampton Town Line. We have hundred thousand dollars for that project for CPA. Um, we're asking for money for this. CPA has paid for a small piece of Jackson Street off ramp project. Is the initial land takings. So we've got money for the projects, competitive source of funding. Okay. Oh, um, I just wondered uh, if you have any uh, plans until the railroad tunnel is done or the ramp, uh, any plans to better mark the signage and the connection and maybe clean up and clearly show where people can go to the connect between the North and the water? Not you. Ecw has talked about there was, we got a grant from he he said put some signs in that had some errors in it. So the signs are great about saying rail trail this way, but they actually read the directions. They don't make sense like south and north and north and south. So so Dpw is looking at how they correct that, um, and I think that's the only thing that's sort of underway. Because I mean that is not a ideal. Right, absolutely. Right. The issue itself is ServiceNet has been wonderful deal. ServiceNet gave us an easement through their property, which is the parking lot up to it. National Grid is great at the staff level and really hard at the higher ups, which has been waiting to get them to. Yeah, the railroad does want you to trespass. They can arrest you for trespassing. Right, railroad trespass. It's going to go right. across it. Right. And it is dangerous, but we don't want to bless it. In particular, remember, when Amtrak comes back, Amtrak will be running 55 miles an hour. And if the railroad gets out of Amtrak, is they get their, their, their tracks fixed. And so it's not just Amtrak, it's the freight trains that will now roll at 20 to 25 miles an hour. They'll be rolling at 50 miles an hour as well. So when the tunnel gets put in, part of it is going to be fences along the railroad, and people might be able to come through. I just want to mention a little bit about Southampton. Southampton was the only community between here and Haven to vote down the trail in the mid-90s. But through a generational shift and hard work of Friends of the Southampton Greenway, that community is at yes to study the trail. And there's actually now a group called Iron Horse, uh, I forget the second part of their name, but they do, they rip up railroad track 
and ties and lay down a uh, stone dust path for free. For free. It's only heard of in the eastern suburbs of Boston, where the vast majority of the rail trail network being developed in the state is out there. It's all owned by the MBTA, 90% owned by the MBTA, and they're transforming things. And if the community wants to build a paved path on top, they can get extra funding for this. But it's a cheap way to go. Southampton is perfect because the rail is still in place. The railroad is willing to sell. The state senator wants to get funds for it. And the town just really has to have the institutional courage to move forward. There's still some sophisticated, hardline, radical antis in charge of uh, making noise down there. But they were defeated at town meeting, and the project should go forward. You need to be a part of it. Any last questions? Yes. One quick comment. I just heard something up there. I'm from Westfield Friends Group. And oh, great, great. Yes. Yeah. Ask me about it afterward. I want to take up everyone's time. So. Why don't you take up our time? Yes. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Joe Jafiuk is my name. I'm with the uh, Friends of the Columbia Greenway, which is Westfield's trail. Um, we are, we've been languishing a long time. Craig Gaines spoke with us about a year and a half ago. But we're, uh, we're moving forward right now. We've got all, it's divided into three sections. It's about a three mile section that runs right through the center of town. If you ever go to Westfield, it's all elevated on a railroad berm. The entire thing is, is uh, above the town. And it, it connects to Southwick's trail, which goes down into Simsbury and, and keeps going along there. It would be the northern terminus of that section of the trail right now. It's uh, got nine bridges in it. Never comes down to a uh, street level through the town. It's a very expensive project. You're saying it eats up a lot. It does. Um, and it's been about 15 years that it's been kicked back and forth. But at this point, the, the uh, trail is divided into three sections, the northern, central, and southern sections. All three sections have been uh, bonded for design, and that is under contract right now. Uh, so we're moving forward with that. And it's, uh, the current administration at, in Westfield is really pro uh, this, and, and it's really moving forward. It's very exciting for us. So. Uh, the, the design is, is pretty far along from the southern section. The southern section is at 25%. So if you're familiar with Westfield, it's from the Southwood Town Line up to uh, East Silver Street in Westfield. That goes over two bridges. One is over the Little River and then South Meadow Street Road. Uh, that's at 25%. The center section is right through the heart of town, and that's six bridges, I think. And then the northern section actually crosses the Westfield River. So if you go down through Westfield on 10 and 202, there's a great river bridge project there with the two big green bridges. Right to the north of that is the old railroad bridge that crosses the Westfield River, and that's the northern section. That's a 25% design. The central section is at 75% design. All three sections are now, you know, being, are funded to get to 100% design. We're looking at the project. They're saying 18 to 24 month design cycle on that. If we're lucky, yeah, I think that's what some artists and, and the problem is the bridges, the the uh, bridges that go through it. That's the expense. That's the hold up with the design. That's always been the hold up with the design. It's the thing that makes this trail a really unique trail. It's completely elevated. It's uh, it's really something else. And, and we've got a French group that's been active uh, just a little over a year now, and uh, we're trying to get some traction, and I'm up here to try to do a little bit of networking. With, I've got a few names written down, and I'm going to try to introduce myself afterward, and, and I hope to benefit from what everyone else is wanting. It's a great project for Westfield, and, and for this whole system, for the farm and canal system, it really is great. And I, and I I'm the guy that gets to present to everyone in town. So I was at the Rotary a couple of weeks ago and, and doing this and, and talking about the history of it as the, as the canal system and going to the railroads and then everything else. You might want to check the High Lines website, the High Lines. Yes, they, yeah, they, 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 I was in the National Geographic this week. That's one of my, well, they one of my things. The website for the High Line touts the Westville project is one of only really? a few in the world that yeah. go yeah. elevated to <laughs> Well, you know, I keep saying that in my presentation without really any basis in fact. <laughs> I never let that stop me, so. uh, But that's good to know that, that I haven't been lying too much because that's one of the selling points, and, and there's surprisingly few people in the community that are aware of how unique it is, and, and it really is, and how far it extends south from us is a real surprise for people. Anyone want
wants to ride a new trail, go down to the, the Southway Trail and take that down into Simsbury and beyond. It's a gorgeous trail. They've done a great job with it. They really have. It's open across the board. It's the first interstate trail in the world. I always say that too, with no basis in fact. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 